Hello, Gary Stearman sitting in for J.R. Church. It's Friday, May 14th, and for today's Prophecy in the News update, we're going to look at the news uh, in Israel once again. And the reason we do this uh, so consistently, and there's a lot of world news, but Israel is where it's at. I'm looking at Ezekiel 36, and uh, Ezekiel prophesied something very interesting that has a lot of news currency for us. Uh, Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 2, Thus saith the Lord God, because the enemy hath set against you, Aha! Even the ancient high places are ours in possession. Therefore, God is going to do thus, thus, and thus. Uh, the idea of uh, the enemy saying the ancient high places are ours in possession, and uh, those, of course, are the mountains of Israel. Uh, reading down to uh, Ezekiel 36, 6, and 7, Here's the outcome. Prophesy therefore concerning the land of Israel and say to the mountains, to the hills, to the rivers, to the valleys, thus saith the Lord, Behold, I have spoken in my jealousy and my fury because you have borne the shame of the heathen. This is God's reaction to the enemy saying, Aha! Even the ancient high places are ours in possession. And today, as we've pointed out so often, the world is fighting to see who gets pieces and parts of a divided Israel. <clears throat> On uh, May 11th, uh, according to Debka file, uh, we had a visit to the Middle East, and, and the visitor was Russian President Dmitry Medvedev. He was uh, in closed meetings with a Palestinian terrorist leader. They met in Damascus, Syria. Damascus, Syria, Hamas Khalid Meshal met with uh, Russian President Dmitry Medvedev, and uh, also present were Syrian President Bashar Assad and leaders of the extremist Palestinian organizations from Syria and Lebanon. It was kind of a secret meeting. It was a closed session headed by Medvedev. In Jerusalem, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, apparently unaware of the Russian President's plan to meet with the heads of Israel's arch foe Hamas, that referred to Medvedev's comment that Moscow seeks a role in the Middle East peacemaking by welcoming any uh, constructive co uh, contribution to the effort. Now, what we have here uh, in simple terms is a meeting of heads of state, representatives from uh, the various warring factions, uh, Hezbollah, Hamas, uh, representatives I expect from Iran, although it was a secret meeting and they're not listed, all met to decide how war should be waged in the Middle East. And clearly that's what's happening. At the same time this was going on, a Russian foreign, foreign minister, Sergei Lavrov, warned the United States and other Western nations, and that was just yesterday as we speak today, against imposing unilateral sanctions on Iran over its nuclear program. That was reported by Interfax. Uh, US, the uh, U.S. President Obama, according to Interfax, had been lobbying Western companies not to do business with Iran but had not yet gone so far as to impose sanctions against Iran. Nevertheless, the Russians are very worried uh, that the United States may be uh, pushing back against Iran. What you have here is what the Bible predicts, a an alliance between Russia and, as it's called in the Bible, Persia, is growing stronger every day. Israel and the United States fit very prominently into this picture. Iran, meanwhile, <clears throat> has built a nuclear-capable cruise missile uh, able to strike Israel, and by the way, with deadly accuracy. Uh, this is an extreme threat to Israel, said Yair Shamir, chairman of Israel's aerospace industries. Uh, he gave a lecture in which he described the uh, uh, capabilities of the KH-55 cruise missile uh, this basically had been a joint uh, Russian-Ukrainian uh, uh, development project, and it is a very fast, very tricky, and very accurate missile that has now been tuned up to even higher levels. It can carry a nuclear warhead from Iran to Israel. And again, you see day by day uh, new little details creeping out 
And these new little details each add a kind of a building block to the war footing that's already present. Iran test fires Hezbollah's missiles. We've been talking about Hezbollah's rockets. They're uh, encamped, as you know, on the northern border of Israel. And they have, according to most authorities, more rockets than, than many small countries. But now Hezbollah is armed with something called the Fayar uh, 5. It's said to be extremely accurate. It is said to carry a very large payload and it can reach as far south into Israel as Netanya and Herzliya. Those, those would be the northern suburbs, basically, of Tel Aviv. Uh, this missile is now in stock. Iran has test fired them and uh, made a big show of same so that the world would know uh, what Hezbollah is armed with. Now, as this is all happening, we have, I guess, some good news. Uh, here's uh, an article from a uh, Jewish rabbi. His name is uh, Rabbi Lazar Brody. And he writes about what he considers to be a, re a recent miracle. Uh, he says in, in his article, if, if we knew the miracles that the Lord does behind our backs, we'd all be breakdancing in the middle of the beltway at rush hour. Uh, he said, nobody seemed to notice the connection between the volcanic ash cloud that was uh, e edging toward Israel, threatening to ground all air traffic, the crazy weather in Israel now and military war games in Iran and Israel's frantic efforts, even putting Russia as a go-between to fend off war with Syria and Iran. All these are pieces in one big puzzle that the Lord's putting together to hasten the redemption. This is the Jewish view. This man is a religious Jew and he uh, is excited about what he sees the Lord doing in the Middle East. And he asks the question, what's the big miracle? Well, he says that under the guise of military maneuvers, the Iranians were recently in strike formation. They and the Syrians uh, noted that the volcanic ash cloud from Iceland uh, was drifting toward Israel, and they saw this as an opportunity to launch an invasion because they figured that Israel would not be able to put its uh, uh, turbine-powered planes and helicopters in the air for fear of ruining the engines. And so they were getting ready to stage a, uh, an invasion in Israel. They saw it as an opportunity to pour a massive barrage of missiles on Israel while the Israeli Air Force, uh, and they're afraid of the Israeli Air Force, would be neutralized by a jet engine destroying cloud. That volcanic ash uh, choking the Israel airspace would have made us sitting ducks, he says, to Syrian, Iranian, and Hezbollah missiles. So what did the Lord do? Monday night, and this is last Monday, when the ash cloud was set to reach Israel via a westerly wind, the wind suddenly shifted here and became a 30 to 40 miles per hour searing hot desert winds, the winds that are called Hamsin, and those winds blew in from the Saudi Arabian desert and guess what? They drove the volcanic ash cloud back out to sea. <laughs> no more ash cloud threat. Uh, the Israeli jets could fly. And when uh, Iran and Hezbollah saw that happening, they called off a staged invasion. And it's interesting to me that religious Jews like Lazar Brody and others are looking to the Lord now and they are rejoicing in what they are about to see the Lord do for Israel. Well, that's today's news. And please, please keep praying for J.R. Church. He's recovering and he wants your prayers. He'll be back Monday with another Prophecy in the News update.